Council is opposed? It's carried. Thank you. I have a question, uh, if I may, to Lee. Lee, you had um, commented that uh, with the addition of 200,000, we'd actually, in one year, increased our road treatment by about a third. Is that what I heard you say? Through the mayor to council, we were very fortunate that when council chose to give us the additional funding, that prices were very good, and we were able to stretch the dollars as far as we possibly could. So I'm encouraged because if we had to in another year or two, whoever's here increased our budget, say for road treatment, say 600, 800,000, we might be able to double road treatment, what we did say in 2016, for example, depending on the price of the tenant. Through, through the mayor to council, um, this year we have approximately 650-ish thousand um, through the changes that council made in the budget for the urban street resurfacing. Um, and we're just finalizing the roads that we're going to be undertaking through that. Um, but there's, I think um, we figured out that it was approximately six to seven kilometers of urban roads that we were going to be able to redo this year as a result of that change Excellent. from council. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Councillor Black, thank you for that motion. I'm on page 87 now. I have here a notice of motion for your consideration. It's not to be debated tonight. So um, can we ask a question about a notice of motion, Mr. Clerk? I know we can't debate it. Through, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I guess it depends on the, yeah, the nature question. of the question. Uh, yeah. Is it a general I mean, question about this? If, if you're asking about reconsideration or something, that would be... No, it's just a general question. I, I'm going to allow a general question on this. Go ahead. Just it, it, the intent of this, it, it would not affect the need for having or hiring a consultant. Okay. I was going to just make a couple of comments as... Uh, the instigator of this and I would make these comments quickly and this is really here for you to consider over the next two weeks but um, certainly um, I believe there's a lot of expertise and a lot of enthusiasm in the public to replace recreational facilities in the county and I see this uh, possible advisory committee uh, council as um, simply an extra set of hands a group to assist staff and council, as all of our advisory committees do. And um, I think there's a ton of work to do down the road, and I think uh, some enthusiastic extra hands and expertise will greatly assist in the process in helping council make a decision as to where we end up. Um, and I get that impression from just reading through an application that has to be submitted for upper tier funding. Um, there is still $50,000 in the budget, I believe. J uh, James can verify that. 50000 for a consultant on recreation facilities. I believe there's still some money from the legacy fund there. He is saying yes, and I don't want to get into discussion tonight, but I think down the road we're going to have to get some, some consultant that is in this business putting together the package. Okay, so that'll be here on the 22nd for, for debate. So I'll let you think about that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to other business. Uh, Mr. Cridlin, I'm going to let you get things going. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I only have one item which I should bring to Council's attention on the action items which are included in the agenda. Um, report number four, ice time cost Norfolk Junior Sea Hockey Clubs. Uh, CSD had hoped to have the report in the end of May. It will now be scheduled the first week in June. We've just had a little problem getting some information from another municipality, so we're, we're going to be a week late. I just thought I'd bring that to Council's uh, attention. And that's fine. I appreciate that. Uh Heads up. Thank you very much. Um, Marlene, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple things, if I may, just to update um, Council and the Board of Health, actually, um, that our suspensions are at uh, 
25. So we have 23 from the secondary schools and two from the elementary. So we're pretty pleased with that and it's the best compliance we've had in several years. So thank you to the staff and to the parents who have uh, assisted us in that compliance. Um, and then the second piece that I just wanted to uh, remind uh, council is, is that the enumeration is started this week and it's in full swing and it is going very well. Um, we have uh, we have identified homelessness people in both um, Norfolk and Haldeman, and uh, we want to thank all the volunteers uh, for their great efforts in moving this project forward. Thank you. Lee Robinson? Nothing this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Clerk? Nothing today, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Johnson? Uh, nothing today, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Slu Chenkoff, how are you? Good to see you back. Anything for us tonight to share? I um, just wanted to share a, a personal excitement. Uh, Please. I'm, I'm not sure if you've, uh, you, you probably haven't seen uh, uh, me over the last two, three weeks and seen some of my staff, and hopefully you didn't miss me too, too much. Um, I was uh, too busy becoming chronically sleep deprived at home. We just welcomed our, our third child into our home. Uh, born on April the, the 26th, so that's our third, and so that's the infant and the two-year-old and not yet five-year-old at home. So um, I, I asked uh, my friend Chris over here to, to elbow me if I, if I start falling asleep or anything like that. So um, that's it from me, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. And I hope you're helping Mama a little bit. Uh, you're doing your best. That's all you can ask a guy to do. Mr. Baird? Nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, and I, I believe the... Uh, CAO and Mr. Cribbs will be back shortly, so we'll move on to Councillor Sonnenberg. Okay, thank you. Councillor Brunton. Mayor Luke, I have something here, a little clarification, if I may, and it's through you to Lee. Page 36, Lee, on the um, memos, the information package, and it's a memo from Gary Houghton regarding Norfolk Street North Blue Line resurfacing. Can you? Uh, I'm not quite clear on how that works. Can you explain that to me? Possible resurfacing. I, is it uh, possible or is it going to happen? Uh, through the mayor to council, um, we are working on the tender right now. We should have confirmation on the funding in the next approximately two to three weeks. And then we'll issue the tender and we'll be doing that work this year. They, neither one of those sections of roads um, had a good winter. Um, they're not going to see another winter. It's not going to make it. Um, so that is the work that we will be undertaking. We're just waiting for confirmation from the funding. Um, fortunately, these are textbook examples of the funding opportunity, so we're confident that we'll be able to get the funding so for that. Can you explain to me that fund? Is it? I'm not that familiar with it. Uh, the the um, Ontario Communities Infrastructure Fund. Um, we get a certain amount allocated to us that we typically use towards funding projects. We hadn't. We got um, approximately 1.7, 1 1.6 to 1.7 million dollars in 2018 towards our stuff. We had allocated a small bit for one other project. Um, we hadn't. We had a bad feeling that some of we were going to lose some of our roads over the course of the winter, um, and unfortunately, we did. And so that we've allocated the funding to this. Okay, and that that is a connecting link too. Is it, not? it is a connecting link. Um, we could apply for it under the next round of connecting links funding, but the reality is is that we're going to have to dump a considerable amount of money in that road to make it last until the next, and then it'll probably make the condition of the road too good to qualify for connecting links funding. So we thought that this is a funding. Um, this funding opportunity actually covers 100% of the cost of the project. Okay, and uh, um, so we don't even have to contribute to it. Okay, and will that be from Davis right out to the end of the four lanes? Yes. Okay. And, and Blue Line from Highway 3 um, to the 13th. So okay. two concessions north on Blue Line. Right. And with that Blue Line one, would that be just resurface or would that pulverize it? We're going to pulverize it, top it up with gravel. Okay, and then pave it. And then pave it. Okay. And, and uh, that, will, that will leave it set for probably the next 15 years or so. Yeah. And these are in the urban area of Simcoe. Or one of them, right? One of them is for sure. The other one is a major arterial road that f feeds Simcoe. Thank you. Just had to get that in, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I would now go to Councillor Geisens, please. 
Thank you, sir. Councillor Oliver. I'll get to you. Mr. Mayor, I'm just going to mention one thing, and you may or may not have been intending to say anything about it yourself, but a week ago tomorrow morning is when you uh, had been invited to the Simcoe and District Chamber of Commerce breakfast and gave your State of the Union, I mean State of the County address. Councillor uh, Wells, Councillor Brenton and I were there, and I just want to compliment you on Thank the speech you. that you gave. I thought I knew everything about what was going on in the county, but even I learned, I'm sure all three of us learned some things from your speech. So it was well done and I think well received, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank, thank you. you. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that I don't know going on in this county, but uh, certainly there's some very, very promising and exciting things happening right now. Everyone seems to be fairly busy. So I appreciate that comment. Uh, Councillor Oliver, thank you. Councillor Wells. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, only because we have oodles of time, I have nothing to say. I'm going to move quickly on that. Councillor Columbus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I was asked to raise this uh, question. It's with respect to a road repair. I was asked to raise it at council because everybody's anxious to see what's going to happen. This uh, is the, you're well aware of it, you probably drive it regularly. It's the Church Street East between King James and, of course, uh, Delcrest, which is really, really rough. There was some work done on it, and it's got this bumpy ride. It's a well-traveled road. And uh, there's some thought being that there's work going to be taking place by Dufferin, I believe, for paving by Almas, the Almas project at Bell Street. If they cannot swing around and pick up that section of Church Street East. Um, Hopefully they're watching. Through, through the mayor to council, um, I can do anything if council gives me enough money. <laughs> um, un unfortunately, it's a very different paving operation. Um, what they, because they're reconstructing in that area, there isn't a surface there. So the paving company can't just come in and just quickly throw some black stuff on top of what's there. With the curbs and all the manholes and all the raising and the lifting, it, it's a considerable project. Um, we are certainly aware of the concerns with respect to Church Street. And I can tell you that um, it is one of the roads that we have in the running for potential resurfacing um, as part of the Urban Street Resurfacing Program for 2018. We haven't done the final determination for that, but it is up there. We are also undertaking the new roads need study, and I fully expect that as a result of that, we're going to see some significant shifts in the works that's required to be done. Um, it is also up for consideration um, as we're working through the budget for 2019 that we were talking about before. It's a candidate for some of the additional fund money that we're hoping to have to be able to do some resurfacing. So we will keep council apprised. Um, it is very much on our list and on our radar. And we're working to see what we can do with the funding that we have available. Great. Good to hear that. So 2019, hopefully. Maybe we can have a ribbon cutting there. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Black. Yes, um, thank you, Mayor Luke. A question through you to, to staff, uh, to Chris regards. I, I thought we were going to get the, the Hastings Drive bylaw back. It said two weeks, so it's not here. Is it going to be another two weeks, or when is that coming? Or is that Andy? Uh, <laughs> Through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe um, there was an email from the case coordinator yesterday um, reviewing it all and said that she would anticipate to have a response to us by the end of this week. Oh. So that would mean another two What's, weeks. So it's held up by the province or? Yeah. Okay. So it's still coming. Okay. And another question, um, if Mr. Mayor, um, I'm looking at the minutes of the LPRCA, and I guess it's a question through you to um, the Chairman Columbus. And um, I see that recently um, in the, at their May meeting, they approved a permit to um, an applicant there. And my question is, I'm wondering why LPRCA is approving permits knowing that they cannot build. They cannot build even anything under 108 square feet. And if they do, according to the, um, the ruling, the OMB ruling, enforcement will have to go down there and tell them to remove it. 
So I'm wondering if I'm missing something that LPRCA knows that I don't know. Um, so through you to Mr. Your Chairman Columbus, if he could uh, explain why they're issuing permits. Um, maybe they're issuing a permit and, and, and telling them, we can give you the permit, but uh, you can't build there, and here's a copy of the OMB hearing. Maybe they're doing that, so they're well aware that even with the permit, they can't build. So, could uh, through you to Councillor Columbus. Response, Councillor Columbus? Yes, uh, Councillor Black. There have been in the past a number of these uh, beach houses or change houses approved under the hearing, and it goes through a hearing process at the LPRCA. So all the uh, board directors are there, and it's run like a, a, a court type of atmosphere. And uh, each of these board members has a democratic vote to vote the way they feel is correct after they hear the applicant's uh, application. There's a presentation made. The uh, LPRCA person that looks after uh, planning with watersheds and that type of thing, she's there, she gives her presentation. And even though she perhaps most of the time recommends refusal, the board of directors for the LPRCA, after they've heard uh, the applicant's remarks and after the fact that there's already been precedents that where all the neighbors have had these beach houses, they've proceeded to grant approval. Okay. Mr. Thank you. I appreciate that. And may I ask a question through you of staff then now? Uh, I, okay, I understand the explanation. The explanation is um, the board members, despite what the law is, can vote whatever way they want. Uh, and, and putting people in harm's way. They can do that. So my question through you to Mr. Baird is, what are the ramifications of the Conservation Authority issuing a permit knowing that building cannot occur on Hastings Drive? Uh, through the Mayor, um, thank you, Councillor Black. The LPRCA is not subject to ha having to comply with other applicable law. They can simply make a recommendation or approve a permit. Um, the difference being uh, when we look at uh, our building permit process, Mr. Enslin is our chief building official. He is not legally authorized to issue a building permit unless all applicable law has been satisfied. So in the scenario that you're suggesting, the Conservation Authority uh, can vote how they do um, that applicant then comes forward, oh, well, well, first of all, if they were going to build something larger than 100 square feet that would trigger a building permit, they would come to our office in Langton or Simcoe, and they would be refused a building permit. So it, would, it does create a sense of aggravation. That, you know, why did I get the approval here? Why did I have to do that only to find out I can't get my permit? I think that the challenge is here, we have a number of applicants and landowners that are getting a conservation authority approval and then going out and constructing something under the 100 square foot, like a change house, that is not permitted after April 16th. Um, and if, if those that have chosen to do that, um, we have no choice but to pursue with enforcement, and it would be removed. Okay, well, that's the answer. It just, it's, uh, Mr. Mayor, it, it just seems irresponsible to me. Yes, I understand they have that democratic right, but why would you tell somebody you can build there when in fact you cannot and then we as Norfolk County are now the bad guy having to enforce it and tell them to take it down. Well, Councillor Block, it would, I would think it would make sense, and I can't speak for LPRCA board because I'm not a member, but I think it would be fair to tell applicants that we will approve it, but in the end it's probably going to have to be removed. I think people need to know that before they spend a nickel Directing and so you know again, I can't speak for LPRCA. They, uh, they're big people, and they can uh, decide what they want to do as a board. But yes. I would think people should need to know that because it's setting them up for spending money that maybe they shouldn't. Uh, they should be aware of the eventual outcome. And, and, again, and thank you for that. And I, that was I, I my know. preamble, saying that yeah, okay, you have the right to make those approvals. Go ahead if that's your democratic right. But I think it's also their responsibility, as I said in my preamble, that they tell them, we can give you the permit, but guess what? You can't legally build there. And here's a copy of the OMB hearing. 
Uh, Councillor Brunton, please, on this topic. Yes, Mayor Luke, and uh, as a member of the LPRCA board, I must say that I was a bit confused when this came before us last Wednesday. And I'll tell you where, where I'm a little bit confused, and I have all the respect for the OMB decision. Don't get me wrong there. But there's two things that come to mind. One is, are we not still under the 85 bylaw until the new bylaw is written, Mr. Baird? Um, the, the ruling from LPAT, the former L, uh, OMB, it was right at that time, they've made that ruling that comes into effect immediately upon the passage thereof. What we're seeking is just some clarification to get the proper uh, wording so we can use that for an enforceable bylaw. But the intent is still there from the moment that decision was made. So you're saying the ruling is supersede even if we haven't passed a bylaw? Correct. It's in, it's in okay. effect. We're just trying to make it a little tidier so we can use it going forward. All right. And I guess my next question is, I know when we discussed the uh, definition of a beach house is not in, currently we do not have one. And that was an issue that we discussed also. Like, I think there was uh, dust to dawn, beach house. Those definitions have to be uh, put into a bylaw, uh, into effect and that they can be challenged by any uh, person out there that wants to challenge those two decisions, right? That's what we were told last week. Yeah, just for clarification, it's not a beach house, it's a change house. Sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Beach Apologies. houses are pretty nice. So. <laughs> uh, no, they, they would be subject to you know, whatever enforcement provisions. Uh, we are confident that the decision that they've made is very black and white, and we're able to enforce it. That was... It solved a big gray area that had existed for since 1985. Okay. Well, and in and, and all respect to Councillor Black's concern there, I, I know we have to shut the door. I'm not disputing that, but that's where the confusion li uh, lied with me or laid with me, whatever you want to call it. But I could not decide. I would think the bylaw would be uh, the whole issue, but I guess I'm, uh, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Thank you. Okay. Um... I got everybody. Yes, I have. I have seven on the list and one is away. I just have one item quickly, then I'll turn it over to the uh, county CAO. Uh, I had a phone call today from Constable Ed Sanchuk. And he just asked me to invite council. As you know, we have a Citizens Police Academy in operation right now, and next a week Thursday, which is the 17th, at 7 p.m. at the OPP station. They are having a wrap up there, and uh, Constable Sanchuk would like to invite all of council that can come at 7 p.m. to attend, and you know where the OPP office is on Highway 3. I will certainly be there at 7 p.m. I extend that invitation to you. I also had, a, uh, had questions on the uh, information. Pardon? I'm sorry? I'm sorry, a week, a, week, um, a week this Thursday, which would be the 17th of May at 7 o'clock um, p.m. And uh, Councillor Brunton, you asked my question on the um, memo from Mr. Houghton on page 36. So I was pleased that you brought that up. Mr. County CAO, other business, if you will. Do have one fairly significant item. Uh, Some time back, I did indicate we'd be able to bring a report to this council on May 30th with respect to a potential location for a uh, theoretically potential recreational facility. Um, and uh, I do at this time have to inform you that uh, I, I was entirely incorrect. It is not feasible to bring a report back for May 30th. I can give you an update, however, uh, on the subject matter overall. Uh, we are looking to have a special meeting of council. Uh, the clerk's office is canvassing potential dates. Uh, we're looking somewhere around uh, June 20th. I can tell you what um, we sort of, uh, not we, I, failed to appreciate when I gave you that date of the 30th is that when looking at potential sites, whether within or outside the urban boundary, um, they failed to sort of fully appreciate that building, a building of that size, which could in theory 
encompass two skating rinks and two swimming pools uh, would be could constitute a major draw on the water resources of uh, the area and could have a significant impact upon uh, existing facilities up to and including residential homes. Accordingly, we need to do uh, some fairly technical engineering analysis on the potential sites we've identified before we can, in any good conscience, suggest areas, locations as uh, workable to you one way or the other. Uh, we do not want to provide, identify opportunities that turn out to be not uh, technically feasible or that would require many millions of dollars in upgrades um, just to be able to make it technically feasible. So uh, for a number of reasons, but that being the sort of most self-evident and that uh, failure of understanding of my own as far as timelines to bring you initial choices uh, is in is impacting our, our capacity to get uh, to meet the May 30th deadline. And I, I know that to be impossible at this point in time. Um, we don't yet have a date uh, identified, but uh, the clerk's office will be working hard on that. And I can tell you roughly uh, the middle of June, there are four or five dates that uh, we think could work. Uh, and we will be able to bring you a fulsome report. I imagine it's going to be a full day session. Ultimately, of course, you control that, but I think realistically, uh, six, seven, eight hours is sort of what will be needed to uh, realistically and in a substantive way address a number of the uh, potential op options that will be put before you. Uh, and I can tell you that, that at this point in time, there are more than a dozen that have been identified. Um, and with that, I do apologize for uh, the May 30th. I was hopelessly optimistic and I didn't know to, to quote George Bush, and I can't believe I'm doing that as a sign of wisdom. I did not know what I did not know, and now we do. Uh, so the failure is mine. Uh, nevertheless, uh, middle to latest June, I would imagine we'll be having a entire a day long closed session meeting, um, and there'll be a, we hope to give you a pretty good analysis upon which to have a fruitful discussion. Thank you. We'll stay tuned, and we, as I mentioned, may need a special meeting called as our June agendas get very heavy before the summer. Um, I'm going to leave my agenda open to page 51, uh, where we have an amendment to official plan request, uh, which we will be ready to start right at 5 o'clock. In the meantime, we'll have a recess until then. Thank you. On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No County home, no foe, no foe. We know you can't go wrong with the friendly folk of no foe. You won't be a stranger long. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world. Can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road And found to be back for more Oh no
With hard work we built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. Built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or 
or spend the day or decide to call it home. You'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No phone, no phone, a southern county home. No phone, no phone, we know you can't go wrong with a friendly phone. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road and found to be back for more. Oh, no. With hard work, we built a dream that only will in hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Erie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. On a strip of sandy soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road and found to be back for more. Oh, no. With hard work, we built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display 
at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. No folk, no folk, a southern county home. No folk, no folk, we know you can't go wrong with a friendly folk. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No County home, no folk, no folk. We know you can't go wrong with the friendly folk of no folk. You won't be a stranger long. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world. Can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road And found to be back for more Oh no Build a dream that only will enhance could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No County home, no folk, no folk. We know you can't go wrong with a friendly.
lonely folk of Norfolk You won't be a stranger long Take in the small town atmosphere Be amazed at all that we grow Like our kids that go and see the world And can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road And found a big back for more Of Norfolk, Norfolk My Cullen County home Norfolk, Norfolk We know you can't go wrong With a friendly foe With hard work, we build a dream that only will enhance could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just a place for you. On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No County home, no folk, no folk. We know you can't go wrong with a friendly folk of no folk. You won't be a stranger long. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world. Can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road And found a big back for more Of Norfolk, Norfolk My Cullen County home With hard work, we build a dream that only will enhance could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you.
On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own Norfolk, Norfolk A southern county home Norfolk, Norfolk We know you can't go wrong With the friendly folk of Norfolk You won't be a stranger Take in the small town atmosphere Be amazed at all that we grow Like our kids that go and see the world And can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road Found to be back for more Of no With hard work we build a dream That only will enhance could do It's on display at our fall fairs And at all the festivals too Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests Where the flower and dogwoods bloom Patchwork fields and rolling hills It's just the place for you On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No County home, no foe, no foe. We know you can't go wrong with the friendly folk of no foe. You won't be a stranger long. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world. Can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road And found to be back for more Of Norfolk, Norfolk My Cullen County home
With hard work we built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Erie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. Carolinian forest where the flower and dog 